Good morning all, it's post bag. Right, let's start with this box. See what I have in here. Oh, it's a soldering iron cleaner with those sort of brass shavings. Hmm, will that replace the sponges? Yeah, so this is a, a welding head cleaner uh, made in China and it is to replace the traditional water seepage sponget for Europe and the United States, the ROHS standard. What's this got to do with ROHS exactly? Maybe this is, oh look, it says, the ball desicton tin slag cannot be splashed on the work table. I think I'll just open it. Okay. Now, has it got any weight in the base? Does the base come off? Yeah, it does. So I could put some weight in there. Uh, to weigh it down and that's the they look very shiny I wonder if they'll stay shiny all right looks like I've got to open this bag and take out this uh, ball of hmm I wonder what this is and will it tarnish it does look interesting now how am I going to shove it in here that way yeah I, I could do with that poking out really so that I uh, can jab my soldering iron into there I'm very interested to see whether this can replace the sponges. Obviously, I'm not going to throw the sponges away just yet. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to use a combination of the sponges uh, with their various shaped holes because that's fun. And uh, also this tip cleaner. Just use them alternately, probably, and just um, get a feel for which one's best. Excellent. So this is uh, soldering iron tip cleaner, 70 millimeter diameter, presumably. Brass wool shavings, heavy duty cleaning tool. Uh, this was $3.27, an additional 55 cents uh, shipping, and this came from Top Seller 001. Right, next up is this. You can kind of tell what it is because there's a, a long tube there and it rattles, so I think it's chips in a tube. Let's find out. Yeah, four chips, five chips in a tube. Right, these are, I'm not sure if you can see that, but they're 74HC86. Uh, so that is a quad two input exclusive OR gate. So these are 74HC86, uh, quad two input exclusive OR gate. Now you can also get the HCT, these aren't HCT. Um, HC has CMOS level inputs. And HCT is CMOS outputs, but with uh, TTL compatible input so that you can mix and match it with uh, TTL. Now I'm planning to use these with uh, HC595 shift registers. So I've gone for the just the HC type. Um, I'll probably clock the shift register using a 7555 CMOS timer. So the whole thing will be CMOS. Uh, let's take a look at the voltage levels. So the HCMOS version will operate from two volts to six volts. Uh, so that encompasses five volts and 3.3 volts. You can use it at those two logic levels. Uh, the HCT has a much narrower range, 4.5 to 5.5, typically five volts. So the HCT is uh, designed to work with TTL at five volts. Now this isn't as broad as the 4000 series. So the 4060, which I was looking at recently, can operate from 3 to 15 volts, which is a very wide range. So my plan is to uh, clock an HC595 shift register. Uh, this will be shifting to the left. Clock it with a 7555 uh, CMOS timer, and then use the HC86 exclusive OR gate to uh, look at the first two outputs and use them to feed uh, the exclusive OR of those two outputs back into the input, and this will create a linear feedback shift register, an LFSR. Now, the only issue I can see with this is that the 595 shift register actually has uh, this storage register between the H stage shift register and the output drivers. And it does say here on the front page, uh, if both clocks are connected together, and they're talking about the uh, shift register clock, the SHCP and the storage register clock, the STCP, uh, the shift register will always be one clock pulse ahead of the storage register. So I'm certainly going to give this a go with the HC595, or in fact several of them possibly uh, to make up larger 
arrays of linear feedback shift registers. But if this um, storage register issue, this two register issue becomes a problem, then I may need to look at something other than the 595 as the shift register, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So I bought my new five pieces 74HC86 uh, quad two input exclusive OR gates uh, at a price of $2.18 free shipping from eComeon2013. Right, next we have this, and I think this has come from Banggood, even though this is actually from the UK, actually from Walsall uh, in the West Midlands. I think Walsall's near Birmingham, isn't it? Ah, okay, let's take a look at what's in there. Yes, now this is a kit, and uh, this kit, I think, fits firmly into the very advanced category. This one is going to be an absolute pig to build. Interesting, it's got these uh, sort of hand-wound coils. Uh, surface mount stuff here. Lots of LEDs, I believe, which actually fit on a curved PCB. Let's see if I can find that. Oh yeah, this is going to be tricky. Lots of surface mount components uh, on this board. And on this board, this is the hardest bit of all. I think this board fits into that board like that. On here, you have to solder surface mount LEDs actually on the edge of here. So they sit across this edge and you have to put a solder blob on one side and a solder blob on the other and the LED has to sit flat. And I've watched people build this kit. <laughs> the LEDs are all higgledy-piggledy. Uh, they probably will be on mine as well, unless I come up with some genius uh, jig to hold them while I solder them. It's going to be interesting. And uh, so what this is, is when you've got this fitted onto there, with all the LEDs around this curve, this whole thing sits on a motorized platform and spins round. So these LEDs are spinning round and creating a spherical sort of globe of light. And then the microcontroller has various patterns in it, and I believe you can download others, um, which, so the whole thing appears as a ball of light with this thing spinning around quite fast. Interesting. Uh, what's this chip? Don't know, because someone's painted black stuff all over it. So uh, my guess is it's either a, mm, I doubt it's an 80 mega, uh, processor. I think it's probably more like an ST uh, ARM Cortex type processor. Yeah, so thanks to Banggood for sending this one in. I think this one's going to be uh, a very long kit build. I might have to pace myself, spread this over several videos. Uh, I'm not going to bother with all the component identification and orientation stuff on this because uh, it's going to take, uh, there's going to be far more stuff that I need to cover than all that basic stuff. So this will be firmly in the advanced category. So yes, uh, this DIY spherical rotating LED uh, kit, point of view soldering training kit, well, it's certainly gonna be that. You can see here the uh, globes. Uh, I think I got this one in red, so it'll be look like this. Um, this is currently priced at $18.99, free shipping. All right, let's have one more, let's have this one. See what's in here. Right, what are these? Ah, yes, these are um, three port USB hubs. Now, are they USB 2 or USB uh, 3? These are USB 2, they haven't got the blue connector. So it turns uh, one USB into three USBs. This rotates. Uh, it rotates, I think, 270 degrees. Not doesn't rotate fully, otherwise all the wires inside there would all get twisted up. Um, yeah, so I presume as well as uh, distributing power from one input to three outputs, it also has the uh, hub functionality, so data is multiplexed into these. And multiplexed, is that the right word? Well, anyway, distributed to these three sockets. However, I want this and this second one for more of a, a sort of art project. Um, yeah, art, sculpture even. But uh, I don't want to say too much about it right now. Uh, this one looks like it's falling to pieces, so 
perhaps a little mini teardown is appropriate. Uh, ooh, that looks pretty nasty inside. Hmm, that won't immediately come off. I'll play with that for a bit. Hmm, interesting. Uh, very fine wires going from the uh, plug to the board. Uh, single chip hub design. I'll take a look at the number on that in a minute. Those wires are interesting because it looks like they're multi-core uh, twisted but with no insulation, just coated in coloured enamel. Uh, green, blue, red and sort of yellowy golden colour. Yeah, that's interesting. I suppose that's to give it uh, as much flexibility as possible because this thing has to endure a 270 degree twist. Uh, let's take a look at the chip on there. Uh, yeah, so is that an HS8836? HS8836 or is it a PT34065? Well, this uh, HS 8836 is actually um, a four port USB 2 hub IC, simple circuit, only three capacitors, a crystal oscillator and a resistance. Uh, the page hasn't fully loaded yet, so, but it does seem to support four uh, output sockets and this implementation is only using three of them. Oh, here we are. Here comes the rest. Can't see where the crystal is. Uh, it does say a crystal oscillator resistance. Interesting. Uh, can't see a crystal on this implementation. Can only see two capacitors and a resistance. Doesn't appear to be anything on the top, so it's a very much pared down implementation. Yeah, and this one's not very easy to turn, so, and it was burst half open. I had to squeeze it back together. Yeah, so they're a bit cheap and nasty, but uh, they'll probably do the job. So this is a, a new mini three port USB 2 rotating splitter adapter hub for PC, laptop, notebook, Mac. Uh, these are just $1.99 each, free shipping. And I got these from Top Wardrobe 2014. And uh, these are today's postbag items. Now I fund the purchase of uh, postbag items using donations that are sent in via Patreon. So here's a, a link uh, through to Patreon. Let's take a look at my Patreon page. Yes, yeah, so uh, here it is. Currently there is $295 per month being donated um, by 176 patrons. So I should say a huge thanks to the 176 people who donate via Patreon every month. Cheerio.